Hey everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to the channel at my craft table. Today I'm going to be making a ghost shaker card. Now this particular shaker card was uh, basically cut out, created with my Cricut. And I'm going to show you all of the elements and how I'm going to put them together. And it is going to be super cute, so I can't wait. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and just dive right into the project and get our sweet little ghost friend put together. So for the first part of my card, I am going to start building the walls of the shaker element of the card. Now I did cut everything out on my Cricut and what I did is I cut out, um, well actually I cut out quite a few ghosts and I am probably going to save these and turn them into some kind of craft, but this is just so cute. I love it. So I used 110 pound cardstock. And every time I cut out one of my little ghosts, it created not only the center, okay, but I also have an outline. And I'm going to be using these outlines to build the walls of the shaker. Only one of my ghosts had the uh, face in it, so I have those just kind of here on the side for later in the project. And then I did go ahead and cut another size this is a um, ghost panel still 110 pound cardstock and this is an acetate ghost these are the same size and these will comprise the window in the back of our shaker card i did go ahead for the sake of time i went ahead and ink blended that one layer and i'll talk about that in a moment but for right now what i'm going to do is i already have two of them started here these are two of the outlines and I'm going to go ahead and glue these other three ghost outlines onto here so that we can start building the shaker. I have four of my little ghost outlines glued together and I'm just going to let them hang out here under this acrylic block for just a moment. I am going to go ahead and start prepping the window of the shaker. So I have four layers of the ghost. I am then going to be sandwiching between those four layers and my top layer an acetate window. And the acetate window is um, basically the size of the complete outline and this is in the design space file and this is colored as like a, a light gray and then all of these are white of course so what I'm going to do is actually I need to be able to see my acetate here okay I'm just gonna bring in a little piece of paper you can see that little shadow it looks like a ghost and let's see how are we positioned over here so it's going to look like that all right got to make sure everything is in the right orientation so i'm just going to put some liquid glue along the edge of this last layer of my ghost and i will lay this down on top of my acetate and we will get this all lined up and then we will need to let that sit for just a moment on under the acrylic block before we put it on that top layer or put it on top of the others. And what I'm doing is I'm being very mindful of lining up the acetate, the edge of the ghost. And I am double, you know, kind of going through here. I want to make sure I don't leave glue on the acetate. So I'm gonna grab a little baby wipe so I'm just kind of making sure I don't have any glue along the front side of my acetate okay and then I'm just gonna let this sit right there underneath that acrylic block okay so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, take these four layers right here you could definitely make this thicker if you wanted and we are going to adhere this acetate to uh, layer to this top. 
and then we're going to turn it all over and we're going to put in our shaker elements and then this will be the back so let me show you it's going to look like this and so we'll have a little bit of glitter and stuff in there okay okay so now i have my shaker window is attached okay there we go and let's get Let's get this one all glued up. Okay, so question of the day is, do you make Halloween cards? Um, I've never really made Halloween cards um, necessarily before now. And for some reason, there's just so many cute things that have caught my eye. So I thought, why not? Why not make a Halloween card? Let's be fun and festive. So, okay, I'm going to let this sit real, just for a minute under there. Yeah, so I've never really made Halloween cards, but they are fun. And um, I do have some more Halloween crafts coming out on the channel, and as well as some more fall crafts. But I thought it would be fun just to break out of the norm and put together a little Halloween card. So let me know down in the comments if you're someone who enjoys a Halloween card or not, which is totally fine. And then um, I guess the question would be, do you like the traditional colors of Halloween, such as uh, orange, black, white, green, and purple? Or are you someone who likes to experiment with different colors for the Halloween season, such as like a mint and a, and a lilac, pink, all of those other colors, a little more pastel? I kind of like both palettes it really depends on the craft and what I'm doing so okay I think that is probably good I'm gonna just call that good actually okay so what I'm gonna do this glitter that I'm using today I got this glitter at Hobby Lobby and I found it in the clearance little on the little clearance shelf and it's like pink purple black and almost like a gold or a yellow, I can't really tell. But anyway, uh, decided I would give it a, a try. Okay, we're just gonna open it this way. <laughs> and so this is what the glitter looks like. And because of the type of glitter that this is, it has a propensity to just kind of, I don't know, stick like a staticky so I'm putting a little bit of anti-static powder on my acetate window just a little bit and next I want to just put a little bit of this glitter here I wish I had like a tiny little spoon I may have to invest in something like that but we go concentrating so we don't spill the whole bottle okay and we're just gonna kind of all right I think that is more than enough glitter and I'm gonna put the lid back on before I spill this because that that definitely could happen okay so now that I have all of the walls glued together, the acetate window sandwiched between the top two layers. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him here on the back. But let me tell you what I did with this one. This ghost is the same size as the acetate, so it will close up our shaker. And I felt that it needed a little something. Let me go like this and let that just still hang out with the acetate block while I'm telling you this. So what I did is I took my ghost and I went around. This is called Sandy Blush and it is by Altenew. It's just a little pink ink cube. And it actually looks brown here, but it really isn't. It's a very, very, very light pink. And um, in person, you can see the pink coming through in places. But, and then right here, this is how light that pink is. It almost looks white on camera. And then I went, I felt it needed a little bit of dimension. So I grabbed my Tim Holtz Distressed Ink in Seedless Preserves. Now this one, you can see it's a little purpley here. So 
I just blended that around the edges, leaving the center to be, you know, that pink. And it looks really cute. So that's what I did before filming. So I wanted to have everything prepped and ready to go. And so now I'm going to go around the edge. I don't want to get it... Um, I, I want this as thin as possible because I don't want it to seep out and be all in the glitter. So I can do a good job here. I love shaker cards. I don't make them very often because I always feel like I'm not very good at them. But I've decided that throughout this holiday season, I want to get really good at them. So I am going to try a bunch of shaker cards. Probably more so for like Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we might do a couple more Halloween. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this side. I'm just gonna let this glue sit here for a minute, get a little bit tacky, not be so liquidy. And then we're gonna place that down, face down like this over our, over our little ghost friend. And, you know, the liquid glue does give us some wiggle room. Okay, so I'm going to close that up and I'm going to let that sit for just a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and move these things out of the way. Then we will turn it over and check out the shaker. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see how I did on this little shaker part. Oh, look, it looks, that looks great. That actually worked. And, you know, I'm not too worried that some of these little glitter pieces are probably hanging up where some glue seeped out. I'm not too worried about that because it does give it like a little element of fun, almost, almost like I planned that, but I didn't. So this is the little shaker and that will be so cute on top of our card. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to grab the facial features of our ghost. Let me grab my little wand and that way I can put these on there carefully. No matter how much I prep and prepare, I always seem to forget something in my supplies. And I'm always like, well, I thought I had everything out, but apparently I didn't. Okay, so these are going to be the eyes and the nose. I could put this in here and then I'll know where they go, but I really, I'll show you why I like to use that for paper piecing. And let's see. Oh, you know what? I am going to do that. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and here. And there and then I'm gonna go ahead and lift up that layer of my ghost so now I know where everything needs to go and let's see I think I'm going to use my where's my scissors Okay, so I don't want the elements of my ghost face to come off. So I am just going to place down a little bit of this red line tape and I'm going to pull up the red backer paper like this and put that over there. Okay, so now this super strong adhesive is on, is on here. And then I'm just going to place that carefully on the face of my ghost. Get it the way I want it. Okay, that is not going to move. <laughs> now I really probably cannot do that with these eyes because they are pretty small. I'm just going to go ahead and place them on here. Okay. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, 
Y'all, this is so fun. I think everybody should try shaker cards. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna let that just sit over there. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to be working on this particular element of the card. So I have a shadow layer and we're going to be putting the word boo on top. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking my mint tape and I'm going to put that down on my mat and then I'm going to put this reversed. I'm going to mirror that basically. And the reason why is because when I'm done getting these layered, I'm going to pull off this particular cardstock part. Everything will be centered or labeled on this blue mint tape. And then I can just lay it on top of my shadow layer all at one time. And I won't have to worry about things not being lined correctly. Okay, so I'm going to put these back in here. So it really is a matter of figuring out how they go. That is the big question. I think the B is probably going to be the easiest. Not going to worry about the middles. Let's see if that one... Oh wow, I got lucky on that one. That was first try right there. Basically what I'm doing is I'm getting all of the letters lined back up where they go. So I'm using the original cut cardstock. This will be super helpful. Then I will layer everything from here. And then we'll stick it onto our black shadow layer. Okay, so now that I have all of the layers glued together, something that I forgot to do earlier is I was going to put a tiny little slit in the cardstock itself so that I could peel it up. So I'm going to do that really fast. I'll just go ahead and I'm just cutting the actual cardstock part. And that way I can just kind of take it off around. And I'm going to use this tool to kind of hold everything down in place while I pull this off. So just like this. If you do this yourself, definitely don't forget, cut little slits on one side of your little cardstock piece. And that will allow you to basically, you'll, you'll just be pulling it up and away from your glued elements like so okay so now these are all on my mint tape and they're there the way they need to be oh my the sun is changing i need to fix that okay let me go fix that light for you these are now three-dimensional and so we're gonna put the boo down then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my glue on this side and then I'm going to lay it down the correct way. So I'll be flipping it over and then I can pull my mint tape off. I think that will be quite handy. I need those tools over there. Okay, so I'm going to get this lined up okay i think that's good i'm gonna let that sit for a minute and get that glue adhered to the shadow layer i'm gonna go ahead and just leave that alone for a few minutes and then go ahead and shake that little ghost again because 
so cute. I just love it. Now that we have the shaker part done, we have this element done, we can start assembling our card. Okay, while all of that is hanging out, I'm gonna bring in my mini Misty. And what I'm gonna do is I want to stamp the inside of my card. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place that down in the corner. And I'm gonna grab some black ink. This is, I just picked this up. Um, I think you can, well, you can get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think I ordered it on Amazon, but you can get it anywhere, any, but um, Ranger Archival Ink, it's jet black and it's acid free, permanent and waterproof. So, oh, funny Michael's story. So I went to Michael's yesterday and I was going to look for a new paper trimmer that is actually a paper trimmer and a scoreboard all at the same time. And they had what I wanted, so I was looking at it. And normally I have Michael's coupons or I have some kind of rewards voucher. So I, I really don't pay a lot of money for things. I don't pay full price at Michael's. That's what I meant to say. And I decided to just check on Amazon, like, well, what's the price on Amazon? Y'all, it was almost $10 cheaper. Um, and I don't always find that the case. So now I'm going to just wait and order on Amazon the new little scoreboard that I want. But I was like really shocked because usually I get pretty good deals at Michael's. Okay, so I'm just placing this little Happy Halloween stamp. Um, this was from scrapbook.com. I think this was one of the little freebies that came. I love scrapbook.com and I love Simon Says Stamp. And scrapbook.com frequently will have, okay, I'm gonna make sure that's lined up. Okay, I think that's good enough. Scrapbook.com frequently has like tiny little freebies that you can add to your order. They don't include them automatically. Like you have to go in and select it and put it in your cart but this was one of those okay so i'm just using my finger to rub off that manufacturer's coating so this is like seasoning your stamp and over time your stamps do better and better and better but when you first get them you definitely want to go over them um, i just use my finger i know that there are tools out there that you can almost like an eraser um, I haven't brought myself to buy one of those because these are the best tools on the planet. The, the two at the end of your, of your arms are the best tools on the planet. That's what I learned from my grandma. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up and I will probably stamp it twice, I'm sure. But I'm excited to get to use this. Okay, so we're going to put that down. And I'm just going to, now this is a pretty chunky stamp, so I'm using pressure to get it all on there. If this was a tiny little delicate stamp, I would not be doing that. I would just put it down and press. Okay, there we go. All right, I think, yep, I definitely need to do one more because it's a little light there in the middle. So we have a brand new grandbaby. I don't know, maybe I will send a Halloween card <laughs> just because it's fun the uh, she's only like well she came my birthday was on the 9th and she was born on the 10th so she was a great birthday present and then the older granddaughter is she just started kindergarten so sweet so cute so maybe maybe grandma needs to send them a little Halloween card that will be fun Okay, I actually think that I'm going to stamp it one more time. I could just use a black marker and go into that little spot, but it is a brand new stamp, so I think just doing it three times will be, will be just as good, and that stamp will get nice and seasoned the more I use it. Okay, last time. I think we are done. Oh, look. Okay, that did really well. Okay, so happy Halloween. I love it. It looks great. What a great impression. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let this just hang out for a minute. Now this is a four and a half wide and five and a half top folding card. So four and a half by 11 is my actual paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move that out of the way. Set that aside. Okay, so the next thing is we got our card base prepped and ready to go. We have our shaker prepped and ready to go. And then let's check and see how this is doing. All right, so my plan was to go like this. And oh, the little eye or the little dot, I'll have to stick that back down. But look at that, it worked. Okay, so just a little tip that you can do Where's my wand at? Oh, here it is. Um, let me redo this here, get that on there. But you can um, do your do a reverse, put it on mint tape, then glue down in it, then lift it up. That's gonna be great. Okay. This here is from this paper pack, I got these from scrapbook.com as well. It's called Sweet and Spooky. It's by Doodlebug. Sweet and Spooky double-sided cardstock. So here's like a candy one and it's pink on the back. And then this, I thought this was so cute. Like that could be a really cute sign. I don't know. It, it just was cute. These are not my normal Halloween um, designs, but I just thought they were cute. And then this one here, and it's purple on the back. So just in case you are someone looking for some Halloween pattern cardstock, that's where I got it, is scrapbook.com. Then, and when you go, they do still have them. I saw them the other day. When you go in there, don't forget, double check their like coupons in their shop. Always check their coupons. They have great little freebies that they always, um, you can always include. Okay, so four and a quarter is the size of my card base. And I want to make this smaller than my card base. And so I have plenty of room. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take off a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'll take this down to four and then this was five and a half. I'll take that down to five and a quarter. And we're going to see if that's plenty of space. Move that out of the way. Kind of bring this here. All right. Let's get this. Let's get this boo off here. There we go. Okay. So. Kind of like that. Perfect. I don't think I need to make this panel any smaller. Now I'm going to bring back in my Misty. It's just really mainly to help me get everything situated. And I'm going to pull this stamp off so that I don't get it anywhere. I'll clean that off with some stamp cleaner. All right, so I am going to, this is the inside of my card. Okay, and I'm going to put this in here like that, or you can let it hang off the end. So sometimes I do that. I just kind of let it hang off the end like that. All right, so this is down in my corner. Put my magnet there. And then, got our little elements here. I'm going to use my dot runner, and I'm going to get this adhere to this card base. All right. So let's see. We need to make sure we line it up pretty good. Okay, so here is our panel onto our card base. Now for these, because I these are dimensional, um, one, you might have to pay extra postage. Just FYI, if you mail 
cards that are not flat, you need to get the non-machinable stamps, which I don't mind doing. That is not a problem for me. And um, if you are, a lot of times I will send my non, I'll send my non-machinable cards through the mail in a package. So mainly, I use them more with packaging or packages. And I use my flatter cards when I'm just sending a straight envelope. So I'm just going to go around. I don't want this tape to come off. I mean, I don't want the ghost to come off. Jeez, I cannot talk today. Oh, goodness. Well, I have been up since 3 o'clock, so you'll have to forgive me <laughs> if I am all over the place. And if you are new, I promise I am usually pretty darn put together. Usually, I say that. So, yeah, my allergies are getting the better of me. I've been up since 3 my, I think my voice is froggy, so, you know, it's just a, it's just a fun day in the craft room. So I'm just using this red line tape. I probably could have done a better job at not having so many little bitty pieces. But this is super, super strong, and I want this ghost to absolutely stay in place. Um, I would not use pop dots or adhesive blocks with a um, with a shaker element simply because it's already dimensional okay and I'm gonna do the same thing with boo I think I'm gonna be a little smarter this time and it's sticking in my fingers that's how sticky it is it's like really heavy duty and again I got it at Hobby Lobby just for you guys in case you want some it's with all their tape and, and pop dots and all that. thought I would give it a try and I like it. This will be definitely in my shaker supplies because that stuff is really nice. Okay, I'm not taking the tape off of that one. I'm just going to put that there as placement guide. I'm going to grab my little wand here and I'm going to pull up the red tape or the red um, backer. Everything's kind of everywhere. School is well into in swing. We are starting week five next week. So we're almost halfway through our trimester. Just gave my first little test and for the first time in I don't know how long my kids rocked that test. I am so proud of them. So proud of them and so I thought this weekend I would celebrate their success by crafting and I actually have a lot to do we're gonna be moving in November so I'll have to be a little more strategic in planning out videos etc so that'll be that'll be fun, but I will have a new craft space. I'm so excited. Okay, let me. I just want to use these tweezers to help me place this. So I want a little bit of space here. I want a little bit of space up there. I want the boo to have a little bit of space around it. And I'm gonna go like that. Okay, I think that's good. And normally I would use my my tape runner and my liquid glue. I don't need to do that. This red tape is phenomenal. And get this side. And I just need to put my little name sticker on the back of my card. I think I'm gonna get a stamp. If you're a card maker, do you have a stamp that you use to go on the back of your cards? Because I'm thinking I need one. Okay, and I kinda yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. Oh my goodness. This, okay. This is just amazing. I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to pull this off. But I got it. It looks so good. And it's so fun. Okay, this is a card. You really could mass produce these. Like you could do, get all of your card bases ready. 
Okay, you could cut all your panels, done. You could layer all of your ghosties, layer your boos, um, and you don't have to do it the way I did that, but I thought that was really easy for me to line all those up. You could then fill all your shakers at one time, then close them up all at one time, then put them on. I mean, really, you could just do an, a total assembly line, but there, sorry for that glare. Oh, goodness. Okay, so there is our sweet little Halloween card. Cute little sentiment on the inside. And then before I send it out, I will put my little name sticker on the back right there. Thank you for joining me today with this shaker card for Halloween. Hope that it was fun and helpful and inspiring to you to make your own little shaker. And um, definitely going to have some Halloween crafts probably a few more cards here and there along the way, some fall crafts. And so, yeah, it's we're getting into the swing of the season. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Okay, if you found any of this fun, exciting, helpful, etc., don't forget, like this video, subscribe if you have not already, and share this with your crafty friends. Uh, see if they would get a kick out of making something like this on their own as well. So with all of that being said, I really appreciate all of the comments and the likes and the shares. You guys are amazing. You're really helping my channel to grow and I appreciate all of you so very much. This really is just a hobby of love for me that I just get to craft and share my ideas with you. So until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.